everyone. Welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast, week nine of the fall season. I am your sit-in host, uh, Sretton, aka SP Kuma. And with me, we have Ku. Yo, yo. And Taylor. Hello. We will have Brian and Sasha joining us later in the podcast. Uh, they're currently, one's coming back from work, and the other one is still at work, I believe. So they'll be showing up later. We have one thing of anime news that's noteworthy from this last week. Uh, the third Hero Academia movie got announced, and it's coming back in, er, this coming summer. Uh, I don't know if we really have anything more. I don't know if we know if it's uh, if it's going to be like a standalone movie or if it's going to be canon. But we will uh, keep you guys posted while we find out. Uh, so we will be this week. We'll be starting off with Higurashi, and I do not watch the show, so you you guys are good to go. Oh man, you are missing out. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure I am. I sure I am. No, I'm serious. It's yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess you're not into this kind of thing, so it's fine. Nah, I like my uh, my rom coms, happy go lucky shows. Just just have some of that, just partially. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Start. Except for the beginning of each arc. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, so you, what you're telling me is watch one episode and then just kind of skip the next three, and then watch the next uh, one. No, you want to watch three and then skip the fourth one, which is like the conclusion of the arc. Hmm. This seems like a this seems like a trap. Uh, it, I guess you can call it a trap, but it, it's a good trap, right? So <laughs> okay. it's, not, it's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, so for this week, we're on episode 9. So it's the end of the uh, Mion and Xion arc, and we're now moving over We are moving over to uh, Satoko. Um, this one, or I guess this episode, starts off at a fairly light mood. Uh, there's no like crazy tonal shifts, even though there was a lot of facial expressions that... I uh, was kind of hinting towards it, which I which I was waiting for, but uh, it it didn't happen. So that was it was nice. It's it's nice how the show can put your defenses up, make you put your defenses up, and then like uh, just just kind of make you feel that way, uh, just like instantly. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it turns out that Satoko actually has a older brother that got either spirited away or uh, disappeared. And it looks like her uncle is coming back into town, and um, which is weird. I thought it was going to be her her father or something, but it looks like uh, this is the guy that we've been seeing in the end credits. That kind of shows like him like having his hands over Satoko. Uh, so I don't know if it's like something sexual or just physical abuse, but uh, you know for sure that this guy's bad if you've been watching the end credits. And uh, there's also a few more characters that came back. Shiona's back, which is really nice. She's not like creepy or anything. So I thought you'd be happy that... about that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I was like, uh, when when uh, Keiichi was having to talk with that that coach or whatever that that kind of pedophile coach. Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I was like, man, that voice sounds really familiar. And then Shion pops out of nowhere and uh, show, showcases herself again. But it's really weird because if you remember in the last arc. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe it was just Rena, but no one seemed to know who Shion was. So I'm kind of surprised that when she popped up, everyone knew of who uh, Shion was. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And yeah, then I was surprised looks, by that too. Yeah, and it looks like this arc started a day before the, the very first episode, June 9th. So I thought that was uh, kind of weird too. I am so bad at keeping track of the dates. Like, if you ask me a single date of when anything happens, I know this stuff happens in June, but beyond that, I'm lost. Right. Does it does it matter, though? Like, the dates at all? or Not that I can remember. I mean, I think it's mostly just so you can kind of... It's just for, like, loosely tracking the course of events, I think. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think it's super important. Okay. Because if I remember correctly, the only thing that's been tied together so far is the, the festival, right? So... Yep. Mm-hmm. Nothing That's else right. has seemed to really matter. So I guess we'll leave it at that. But uh, yeah, it, it, this is a pretty lighthearted episode until the very end. So I don't know. How, how are you feeling about this arc? So I far? think that from what I remember from the original, this is one of the arcs I remember the least. But I do remember it just being straight up like depressing, just like normal life depressing. Um, Sounds like so a great not- show, guys. <laughs> it, 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 but I like the fact that because I was never really that big of a fan of what is it Sa- Satoko is that uh, her name yeah I was never her biggest fan um but it kind of just sheds a little bit more light on why she is the way she is and so I appreciated mm. it for that 
But I really don't know how it's going to go. I don't remember a lot about this arc. I remember who died in the original, and that's about it. So it could really go anywhere from here. Um, oh. But I have to admit that, like, this episode did just seem sad to me because of normal, like, real-life things that could happen, you know? Right, right. So I'm excited for it, but what do you, how do you feel? Uh, I thought it was a nice introduction to a lot of other, like, missing pieces. So if you remember back in the first episode, it looks like Satoko's parents were one of the uh, pro-dam people. And they were the couple that supposedly fell down the uh, the cliff. Uh, before, it was just supposedly a random couple. But now we've learned that it's actually Satoko's parents that were the ones that fell off. And then it looks like uh, maybe her brother was the one that disappeared the year after. So we're just getting more lore dumps as to like who who was what, who uh, where was what, and what the importance are. Uh, mm-hmm. It looks like we find out that Rika's parents passed away as well. So, um, Sren, we can see your Discord. I had to turn on my audio. I, I forgot that I had it maxed out, so I'm probably like, screaming in the mic. So. Oh, okay. No, no worries. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like we're getting more lore dumps. It looks like Rika and Satoko are both uh, orphans at this point, and they were adopted by... I guess the Furude family. I'm not really sure if that's correct or not. Um, that's right. Yeah. So as of right now, that's all we got. And it looks like uh, Satoko's brother was part of the baseball team that they were playing against in this episode. And uh, the brother's friend has a heart on for Satoko, which is kind of weird. But I guess the brother's we'll friend. Are you talking out. about the older guy? Yeah, I think it was like Iris or something. The the coach yeah. of the baseball team. Yeah, I did not remember if he was... Well, I know he was in the original, but I can't remember his thing. But that was a super creepy conversation. Like, I don't know what I was supposed to take from that. If he's wanting to marry her or adopt her. (laughs) Either way, he looks way older than her. So the whole thing is just a little bit icky. Yeah, apparently it's both. And it it, kind of disappoints me to say it, but it totally gives me this, like, old-fashioned, like... Southeast Asian vibe, where a lot of the older guys they they get married to these young girls, or or their parents' males, uh, like marries off their younger child, uh, mm-hmm. for money or stuff of that nature. Uh, so I was totally getting that vibe, which is kind of creepy, and I didn't think I would see it in this episode. But I keep forgetting that this is actually just a like an old fashioned or old style village, just out in the middle of nowhere, kind of. So I guess it would kind of make sense. But oh, also one thing that bothered me was if we're in a town where there's not that many like children, right? Mm-hmm. Where did all those boys come from for this baseball team? <laughs> right? <We're, laughs> like with each episode that we're getting, we're getting more and more children introduced into the series. And it's they just, they're just coming out of nowhere. So I thought that's, that was really weird too. That's a good point, actually. I didn't even notice that. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that one. I think it's mostly not intentional to do it that way. Uh, I don't know, man. That's that's just so weird. Like, especially when it's a, a story about like a mystery in a sense. You're so, mm-hmm. like they're making you try to figure out and piece together this giant mystery. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that there's so many like inconsistencies just being tossed into the uh the show. But I mean, it's 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 pretty funny. Like, it makes me like pay attention to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I can't complain. But yeah, that's just that just completely threw me off this episode. So. Yeah, um, I could see that. I, that's one thing I didn't I didn't notice that one either. There's a lot of stuff that like like I don't I, I I kind of just go along for the ride with this show. Like I don't I'm not trying too hard with details because for me with this show, if I get too hung up on details, I confuse myself later on when they get um what's the word? Um um like if, if sorry, I can't think of the word, but like if it doesn't add up, like if that if those details aren't consistent and they change, uh-huh. then I'll notice it and I'll get confused and I'll have to go back and watch things. For me, I found it's just better to watch the show and kind of just take it in and not think too much about it until it gives me spoon feeds me the answers. That's that's what my takeaway from going through it the first time was. OK, no, I, I get that. Oh, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad Shion's back. That was my that was my number one takeaway from this episode. Shion is She's not crazy. Hopefully. What if she's only in this episode? Oh, I'll be so sad. But I don't think so, right? If you just nonchalantly throw her back in the mix like this, like I don't think I don't think this would be the last time we see her. Plus, this is 24 episodes, so we might get a, a few more showings. Uh, uh, yeah, but that's that's all I got for this episode, though. I feel like the next episode is going to be fairly dark. Uh, but I, I guess mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, that's all I have for. I never really have too much to say on like the first episodes of these arcs. 
Right. Just them being cute. This episode, in terms of like the lighthearted stuff, though, this episode actually was, I think, the cutest. I really liked, I don't know, just their interactions. They felt a little bit more authentic and less forced than they sometimes do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I don't have anything else to add. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that'll be it for Higurashi then. All right then. Uh, well, we are still waiting for Brian, so we'll move on to Damachi next, since that's one of the shows he was not able to catch up with. So, Ku, oh, okay. if you would like to start with this one. Oh, yeah. So, with this episode, we are starting off with the aftermath of, uh, of what happened with the last episode, or the last arc. I guess it's the same arc still, right? I would say yes. Or, so. you, okay. So, now it's come down to the point where, uh, ah, I forgot his name, but I- I- Ikuros, or Ikilos, uh, the god of the familia. The one that got before. banished? Yeah, so he got banished, and it looks like uh, none of his familia survived. So, oh. Can we difficulties here? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it looks like he was the only one that was left of his familia, and then he got banished from the city. And then now we're trying to figure out how to save the uh, the Xenos from uh, going from hiding inside the, the outer world and going back into the dungeon. Um, and it looks like Bell is going to be the the next guy in line. That's going to be like the, the, the hated... Uh, I guess in, everyone looks at him with like such disdain. I guess he's kind of like the villain now of, of the of the city. Um, but he doesn't really care. He did what he thought was right. And they're going to use that to his advantage at this point to get the Xenos back to the dungeon. It's really weird how like they're like how like everybody's like so mad at him when really he was just kind of following following the rules of the dungeon where you cl- where you basically like you know call out your or call or claim your kill. I'm assuming that it just probably it's because of like all the damage that happened. Yeah, um, where I'm, I'm guessing that's the only reason why people are like mad at him. Because other than that, I mean, he was basically doing the rules of the dungeon. Just it wasn't in the dungeon. There was w- right. Go ahead. No, right, right. You, uh, but the thing is, is he he was basically trying to uh, claim a prey that he couldn't handle. So because of that, there was a lot of dumb damage that was done. And also when he was chasing Winde, uh, like to that stadium, whatever, he did shoot firebolt at a lot of the uh, a lot of the other ventures. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. You know, when you do friendly fire, uh, it doesn't always end well um, with others. So I mean, that's also why. Yeah. Um, so my first kind of my first actual kind of complaint of this uh, from this season is when Ikilo, or Ikiros, Ikilos, or I, I can't really pronounce his name, but <laughs> just like how he got banished was just it seemed like it was just kind of really abrupt. Like there was really uh, no like talking to the guy. They basically just kind of grabbed him and basically just kind of just shoot him out of the out of uh Horario? or yeah, the the the, the town. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like it, it, that just kind of seemed weird to me. Uh, that was just kind of. Uh, I would have liked to kind of like know a little bit more, just like have some sort of expl- explanation. Even though I don't think we would have really probably got anything from him, but even if maybe they just like you know some of the other gods or some of the other people that are surrounding him, uh, gave us a little bit, just a little bit something more, like like why they're all of a sudden just like abruptly just you know banishing him from from the city. Well, I actually don't mind it as much because with the pacing uh, of this episode, it looks like there are a lot of details that we missed, and they did it on yeah. purpose to get ready to finish up the the season, right? Right. Uh, because if you paid attention to it, it looks like uh, like him and Hermes was able to talk a little bit more, and that's how Hermes was able to grab that diary of uh, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> now they have they actually have a plan as to how to get the Xenos back into the dungeon. So it looks like there was a lot of like background conversations to kind of like make this plan, get to the part where they're able to exile Ikelos from the from the town. Um, so I'm sure there was a lot like cut out from this episode, but I think it was done in a way where the pacing of the story was still at a good pace. So okay, all right, yeah, that, that actually covered. I completely forgot about the book or that mm-hmm. little or the little diary I guess that, that popped up. Uh, right. and they're definitely setting up for like. Kind of like the like the main fight or kind of like the main arc, so I'm actually kind of I'm really hyped for the next episode because mm-hmm. this is basically when everything goes down. Um, the one thing too, I don't really get like uh, well, I don't actually completely get, but apparently Finn hates monsters quite a bit. Well, it might have to do with his backstory. Uh, I don't I don't really remember much of his backstory either. Well, I don't, either. I don't think I don't think the anime went over it. Yeah, yeah, because I guess he's part of the the halfling race, and I guess he's trying to. Oh no, I remember. He's trying to like make a name for himself to make halflings look uh, more appealing or like 
give themselves a better reputation in a point. Because I think as of right now, uh, him and Lily are the only halflings in over area or whatever. Yeah, it's it sounded like a lot of halflings got knocked up from monsters in the past that we just don't know about. Right. So it sounds right. like that he kind of has like a hatred for monsters. It sounds like from back in the day. Yeah, so either he's got like some personal vendetta, or he's just trying to prove himself to make halflings like have a better, uh, better reputation. Uh, yeah. In a sense. Yeah. So but, yeah, I'm but, not really sure. Yeah, but just having the Loki familia just a part of this already just kind of amps it up because like everybody in their party is just insanely strong, mm-hmm. uh, and like just like majority of I think all of them are over uh, Bell's level. I don't even think I think I don't think anybody in that like kind of like the main party. They, they gotta be like what level four and above. I don't think there's any of them that are level three, except maybe, oh, yeah. except yeah. maybe the the mage girl that we don't see at all ever, unless it's like the eyes off story or the uh, spinoff. I, Not spinoff, I but side story. Uh, she's kind of like um, who is it? The archer chick from the from that one familia with the medicine, uh, the one with the blue hair. Oh, uh, the sniper chick. Yeah, I don't remember her name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, she's probably the same level or like has the same airtime as that person does, just because I remember seeing her in the anime, but or not anime, but the, in game. the mobile game, yeah. right? So she does have like her own side story too, but it's just she wasn't as important. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we would know all these people's names if they actually showed as many, like if they actually paid like attention to the story as much as yep. like they did in the mobile game where they actually took time and they didn't have kind of like a time limit. Right. That would be very, very helpful for a lot of these characters that uh, will play a much bigger part later on, mm-hmm. I'm sure. But as for now, kind of yeah. Thing. Although I'm not really getting the like the conditioning that they're setting for themselves either. Like I don't get why. Uh, who was it? Like the main guy, the the main leader, uh, the the Oracle guy, the one that fails reports to. Uh, Uranus. Okay, yeah, Ornos. Uh Yeah, I'm not sure why he can't just talk to locally, like bring her to the side and say, hey, uh, this is our situation. I would appreciate it if you don't kill the Xenos <laughs> because they're monsters of intellect, right? Yeah. Um, especially if that's the main concern. Because if you think about it, like Freya's familia is way stronger, but they're not doing anything. So why is it that uh, Loki's familia is so like, like dead set on killing all the monsters? So To be fair, we don't know anything about Freya's except she has the strongest adventurer. Right. Uh, we don't know like really who else is a part of her team. I mean, it's almost like does she need anybody else? Because it seems like King's just a beast. No, but remember it... if you remember the last season, she does have like an elite group of soldiers that are like at least level five or six. Like, God, honestly, I don't remember like, on, par, <laughs> on par vice. Because when do we went to go uh, invade the uh, like the red light district in a sense? Um, there was a lot of soldiers that was like level five or level six at that time that was like fighting off. The, oh uh, yeah, okay, I do remember Amazon something. Familiar. Yeah. 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 So she does have a lot of strong uh, uh, children under her belt. So it's it's, right. it's kind of interesting that they only show King or that she's not really setting out her children out to like do any other work as well. Well, it seems like Freya well, doesn't. It doesn't seem like Freya knows what's going on either. Because I think really the only people that know is Ganesha and Uranus. It seems like those are the only two that know. Right, but to me that doesn't make sense, right? Why would you not like let your two strongest familias know of the situation and have them help them out? Like, but, why are you relying on like Bell and just Hestia? But let me ask you this: How come? But like, you know, maybe there's something that they don't want the other people to know. Maybe it's something that only like, like where they either feel only comfortable for th- these two gods to know. Because like, mm-hmm. who knows about like the other gods? Because it sounds like the gods just basically just don't care about monsters at all. But it seems right. like for some reason there's like a select few who do. So maybe it's so it it could be easily something that could be hopefully cover it up later i really hope it's not something they just kind of cut and just not explain it to us because that would really really suck because i mean yeah. it's a really good question because it's just because at the same time because uh, um like how for some reason they're keeping like you know certain familiars out of the like in the dark or it's of some of the other gods but then right. for some reason only Gan- uh, ganesha and uranus no because um, yeah. i mean you have people like high like high tier like freya who have no clue what's going on mm-hmm and they're basically just kind of like sit, you know, just stand by and watching. But then, um, I also like how the like their plan is basically it's like we're gonna have Bell as bait, and the other pe- the other side's like, nah, don't follow Bell. This is a bait. <laughs> so, yeah, so like you're really hope- everything under control. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that there is a backup <laughs> plan, or like they know that that they know that Bell is the bait, so they're gonna like play off of that. So they're they're doing this whole like double reverse psychology thing. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Um. 
But I mean, I would imagine they would, right? It's oh, all the season, so, yeah. and like I'm sure Fells has like another plan ready for them. Like you can't make Bell look that dumb. I'm right, like, right. Like I've I actually, I, I feel like it would be something like that where they're just gonna have like Bell just basically be there, just assuming that everybody's gonna just assume that he's just the bait. And, and I think that's like why in the opening, and they might end up just being like a Bell and Eyes showdown because maybe right. like they just said, maybe they just said Eyes, and then that that's it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Even though that would be kind of a dumb move because that that one Minotaur is a beast. And it definitely seemed like he could, even with one arm, could go toe to toe with eyes. No, I think it'll be fine because they have Finn and uh, Gareth or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, well, sure. it's if they fight. Oh, you think just yeah, those yeah. two alone would be enough? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Dude, because okay. you have to think about it. I, I, if I remember correctly, I think Finn is actually the strongest uh, soldier that Loki has. Are you sure? I'm, I, I, I feel like eyes is the strongest. No, no, I, I want to say Finn is the strongest because yeah, if you I think like about Finn it, he's, strong, he's the but... one in charge. It could be uh, just don't... it could be just like a you know just to let's give the guy a give the guy some power, make him feel special. <laughs> no, man, if if Freya has 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 Otaro, like Loki has Finn, you know, and then well, like Rivera's there too, and I think they're on like on par at the same level, but like Rivera is more of a, like a mage or a um, like an assistant, but Finn is more of the like go to battle guy. For, yeah. Well, Loki. To be fair, Eyes is really not the t- like the type to where you rally around. She's not the one to give like you know s- speeches. When Finn, we've already seen like basically his abilities. Like he actually has like the power to amp up his party by just basically you know just um what's like those I don't want to call it a war cry, but it's almost right. kind of like equivalent to it. You know from the from the Eyes spinoff when they went down no, to like the dungeon. Yeah, I mean I, I totally get that, but for the whole like like rallying your troops or having the the leadership. Uh, uh, ability or capabilities. I think Ice has it. She just like since Loki has just been spoiling her. I don't think she just shows it because she doesn't have to. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. But I'd, I'd say I'd say they like she has potential. But I still think Finn is actually the strongest and the Loki familiar. Like you, to All me, right. that would, would make sense. So. Okay. We will see. We will see. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm still like really actually hyped for this to basically begin because this is like this is like kind of what the the final kind of was it arc of or no final like basically like part of the arc yeah Yeah. it's like kind of like the closing of the arc where it's just going to be you know intense fights and stuff and just uh see what kind of happens with the monsters even though i'm kind of disappointed that it's that that it's it's going the route of basically they just have to return to the dungeon instead of being accepted which i guess makes sense because it's just it's kind of it's just all of a sudden really quick there's really no explanation and like how kind of how we talked earlier where only two gods know about this so it's definitely yeah. not something that's widely acceptable. Even though, even though I believe if if they would have actually told Ganesha's family like what was going on, I feel like they would have all actually been accepting of it. One because they follow the god, and also because Ganesha works with monsters. So right. I think that would be kind of an understanding, or at least because uh, they never actually kill the monsters. It sounds like they just work on capturing them, and then they just basically bring them to the Colosseum. Well, if if anything, uh, I feel like with what this episode has shown us. The only problem with having them like coexist coexist with each other would be the Loki familia, right? Uh, so as I mentioned before, like Bell and Hestia's familia, they're kind of just like the, the testing ground to see if humans and monsters can coexist, mm-hmm. and it looks like they can. So now they have to like slowly implement that in a way so that the the, the general public is okay with it as well. You know? Okay, yeah. So I think they're just trying to ease into it. Okay. Well, I, I think I'm good to go. I'm. Uh... We'll have, I'm sure, much to talk about for next week's. Oh, yeah. Should be pretty hyped. Yeah. All right, then. So we will call it quits there for Damashi for the week. Uh, Do you guys want to move to Standing on a Million Lives or Ikebukuro? Uh, We can do either or. Uh, Why don't you guys do Standing on a Million Lives? Okay. All right, then. So me and Ku will do Standing on a Million Lives. You go. All right. So it turns out that you know, like Cavell has the hots for uh, the MC, we or thought. We, we thought she did, but uh, she just wanted to say thanks. But yeah, you know, like the more that they they uh, like give her airtime, right? Like show how badass she is. Like I'm starting to like her more and more over darkness. So uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, like her character is, I feel like is is so good. That it just like outshines darkness, right? She's basically the the same class. She has like the same kind of like importance in the show compared to darkness and Konosuba, but she's actually useful, and <laughs> I feel like she's more 
enjoyable to watch or like more yeah. likable in a sense, right? Because uh, you don't have to like play into that ploy of uh, like a useless paladin, but she's really hot, but she <laughs> kind of has like this this quirky or kinky side to her. But no, this is just a legit warrior lady that's like really cool. She has like a like a sense of pride to her, and you know, I just think she's more more enjoyable to like compared to the darkness. So. Yeah, I actually hope if they have main pairings in this, that, that that's actually going to be the main pairings with the the MC and her, instead of like right. the side, instead of like the other uh, party members. Even though I'm pretty sure they'll eventually turn it to like that blonde girl at some point. Mm-hmm. But it, I mean, I'm still kind of hoping no, but we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, with how this has been going, it that might be the case. So the last, so they were able, to, uh, so they they were able to fulfill the part where they had to deliver the package, which was basically just three heads. And mm-hmm. even though the town was just like, nah, you don't have to do this next time. It's like, you could just, be, you just by word, we we believe you, type mm-hmm. of thing. But then, uh, what, so they still have to cover the map. And I believe yep. they close the episode with they're all going to split. Yep. To basically cover up the, cover the map. Okay. And it sounds like there, uh, there's going to be like one of the, one of the cities are going to be, sounds like going against the heroes. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I don't think they're they're necessarily going to stand up to the heroes, but they're just looking at as ways to counter uh, like counterattack if the heroes were to rebel against them. Right. Uh, but from the looks of it, like yeah, that sage or a mage or whatever, uh, it looks like he has intentions of his own. So. Yeah, I really hope they change something in the story where they, uh, you know, how they you get like a, a penalty for hitting humans because it seems right. like they're like it seems like the next arc is maybe mo- moving towards where you're fighting. Uh, he, where you just end up fighting humans, and the, which yeah. is, I mean, that's that's just, I don't know, that's just too much of a, of a, what was it like almost like a, a handicap? That, cause that just that shit just seems like it's just too hard to just be able to just clear, you know, just be able to clear it without actually fighting them, or you just try to get others to do it, I guess. Uh, I, th- I think it's fine because it does set up a way for the main characters to not just be overpowered in a sense. I mean, right? It kind of, kind of levels the playing field. I feel like I don't feel like they're. I don't think they're OP by any by, like, at all. I don't think it's close at all. Bro, when well, you have the power of immortality, that's kind of OP in itself, right? Even like Cavell, <laughs> she can't do anything except constantly slice <laughs> the guy apart, right? And then if she was smart, yeah, she just throw him like in the water and make sure they can't like resurrect that way. But you know, that's if she did the research and like was able to plan it out. But yeah, they have the power of immortality, so these are pretty OP already. I mean, I guess. I mean, one only can pick up like a little bit of wind, and then the other one just can't do really do anything. And then you have fire that maybe she can she can maybe set like a like a some sort of maybe start a, a bonfire, but that's yeah. about as uh, as strong as her abilities are. Yeah, but as of right now, the MC and then uh, who's it? Uh, the blonde hair chick, uh, Shindo or whatever. Yeah. Uh, she, she's actually being. Uh, She's actually gotten a lot stronger though, ever since she got the warrior class. Yeah, because she was able to beat that one uh, bodyguard, the uh, random dude that was so, hanging yeah. out in a <laughs> that was hanging out in a wagon. Right, and you have to remember, like warriors or like like whoever, uh, they're they're actually quite capable themselves. So if the heroes are able to beat them, that means that they're quite strong themselves. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, but, so they're getting more useful. But man, that one. Megumi wannabe girl, like the the purple hair chick with the glasses. Yeah, dude, like I hate her character so much. Do you? <laughs> she's so annoying. She's so useless. Yeah, dude, she's she's like the person that's trying to set people up while trying to fight back her uh, her inner desire for uh, Shoto Shoto boys. I mean, which is creepy so, as in, in itself. Yeah, it's it's creepy. I'm not hating <laughs> that, right? Like if you're in a Shota or whatever that is, you know that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, like, you do. You know, you. There's a time, there's a time and place for everything, and I feel like she she gives like weebs or Takus like a bad vibe, right? So, oh, that's pretty that's pretty intense for a I think for like a weeb. Well, I, at the same time though, she's trying to set somebody up. Yeah, I mean she has good intentions, but I really think it's based off of her own like uh, selfishness, really. Because she's just trying to feed her urge of whatever game she was referring to. Oh, that's right. Like, yeah, yeah. Novel. Yeah, she's playing. She's yeah. playing like her own visual novel. That's true. In her head. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it wasn't like really for for Cavell. It was just for her. So. That's okay. True. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I dislike her a little bit more now. <laughs> Actually, I still really don't have like really anything against. But I don't have like anything really against any of the any of the main cast. Like I still think it's been like a pretty solid show. For especially for Isekai and like what we've been what we've been getting for Isekais, yeah, I think it's actually been done pretty well. 
Yeah, no, I'm starting to like it more and more. Uh, it's it's starting to become something that was deaf in character, right? It's not just some random isekai. Yeah. Uh, I'm really liking the the main guy, Yotsuo. Uh He's, he's awesome pretty too. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to see how to develop this character. But I'm guessing though that this is going to be the final arc then, that, or that's just going to be fini- It's just going to go through this arc for the last few episodes. Mm, well, there's two more episodes, right? Uh, yes, I think so. So I, I would assume, and then they would probably have it, um, or maybe one or two episodes finishing this this uh, quest, and then mm-hmm. having like taking the last like episode or episode and a half to just kind of, um, you know, like the aftermath, and then just kind of setting up for the next quest, I guess. Yeah, so they're kind of in an awkward spot right now. I'm not sure how they're going to end it, but I would imagine they would have one final confrontation with that sage uh, that had to do research on how to kill the heralds. The one that's like randomly, that we just heard about now, like this episode, I think? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the only thing I could think of. Otherwise, I'm sure there'll be a season two and then they can build off of that if need be. Yeah, I'm guessing somebody's going to show up like while they're clearing the map. Uh, I'm going to guess like they're getting like close and closer and closer and... I don't know if, if there's going to be somebody that's going to run into everybody, or if it's mainly mainly just going to be, like, the MC. Because it sounds like they know that they can't just kill them, like, they have to do something else. Because uh, I, I don't believe that they know, like, really how to kill them. All they yeah, know is they that, respawn. I think they'd have to think about it, because if uh, if you remember correctly, with the, the the last guy, the the knights from, from that kingdom... Yeah. They didn't really know, like, for sure how to kill them. They just came up with that idea after they, they thought about it, right? That's like, true. Yeah. oh, these guys revive, so what I'll do is I'll just, like, put some men on their feet and just throw them in the ocean or something so they can't yep. revive. And only they knew. So. Right, and only they knew. So. Yep. Yeah, so I guess we'll wait and see. But yeah. I'm sure later on they'll, they'll figure that out, too, easily. Yeah. But I got nothing else. Yeah, so that's all I got. Okay. All right, so that'll be it for Standing on a Million Lives for this week. We will move to we'll do Ikirubukuro Westgate next. So if you guys right. would like to take over. Yeah, tell I really like this week. Okay. Yep. I really like the episode this week. We are past gang wars. And <laughs> gang wars, right. <laughs> and and I and I'm really happy about it. Um this week was kind of like I was surprised that they went with this topic. I mean, it's a pretty heavy topic. Um talking about like this week was basically talking about um, parenting skills and raising a child as a single mother and the struggles that they can go through. And I didn't always agree with what the episode I think was trying to share, but I, at the end of the day, it was mostly kind of just acknowledging that it's really difficult and kind of cutting them some slack and shedding light for people who don't know how hard it could be. Right. But I did think it was a pretty, um, tough subject matter especially considering the mom's thoughts and actions mm-hmm. um and i think they did it really well i don't know what do you think uh well not a single father or a single parent um i can't really relate the uh the feeling but yeah no, i thought it was really well like it was definitely very mom and especially with that, that piece that was dropped by Koto's mom like you no know, like I, I did that too when i was your <laughs> you know, and look how he. Um, yeah, it's pretty insane, and I imagine what a person be going through. Uh, that's in that certain situation. I would imagine it's somewhat similar to someone who's like teetering behind or uh, like uh, between like suicide or not, right? Like everyone thinks that they're just barely holding on, but if if you know if you've experienced that before, you already know that if you look at them, you can tell that they've already like fallen to a point beyond help, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But luckily, they were able to catch her before she went into that, um, like, that far. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it definitely sheds some light into the situation of how hard it can be uh, mm-hmm. and kind of, like, how bad the general public can be when they don't really know the situation or they're not thinking of it other than, like, just with what they see. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, it was, I think it was done fairly well. It was, it was kind of random, but I think that's just, like, the appeal of the show. They just bring up, like, things or ideas that uh not a lot of people touch base on or are aware of Mm -hmm. um so yeah i thought if there was something that seemed pretty random or forced about the episode it was the prevalence of there was something that seemed pretty random uh, men who are trying to recruit single mothers for the sex industry (laughs) i thought that was a it seemed a bit contrived 
Uh, I mean, no, I, I feel like it would make sense, right? Like, it's yeah. either that or you pick on girls that, like, ran away from home, I guess, or who are having troubles at home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be fine. It's just, it seemed a little weird to me that, you know, there was this article in the newspaper about, oh, you know, so, some mother's kid fell off a, fell off a balcony. And somebody else read that and they was they were like, I'm going to go for this one. I'll, I'll have her begged in a week and have her in the industry. Like this, this uh, lady is losing it. <laughs> it just seemed like a bit of a stretch to me, but. See, that's why you're not an expert like that one guy. This He's is an why. expert scouter. This is why you need the gang wars. <laughs> the gang wars were even worse. There was no reason for any of it. <laughs> like, no, those those will fight for power, right? Kind of. Um, yeah, randomly they came out of nowhere. It's not like Game of Thrones where you see scheming and there's motives and there's like chess pieces moving. There was nothing. It was just like, oh, I'm a character who's had barely any screen time and all of a sudden I'm mad that I'm not the leader and I'm just going to throw a hissy fit for two episodes. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, that's all it was. Yeah, so, basically. So uh, I, I, I like these episodes. I think that this is where the show is stronger just for itself. And I thought it was interesting. And I was impressed that they handled it with such nuance. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely agree. Although, again, um, I still want my gang wars. But at this <laughs> point, I've given up. Um, okay. This is like the animation conversation with Haikyuu. Like, I'll just assume that that's how you feel. <laughs> Guys, they just, need, they, uh, just, they just need Eminem and his mom's spaghetti. It'll be good to go. Uh, I mean, they could go that route because apparently the leader of the Red Angels, he's from, like, he's actually from Chicago. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Maybe so he's based off Eminem. Yeah, you know, like, I'm sure Eminem's parents passed away when he was in Chicago, and then uh, he pursued ballet, and now he's in Japan just performing for some reason. <laughs> you guys, every cra- time he just dances in the park <laughs> for no reason, especially, like... <laughs> The sound that they used for when he started dancing at the end of the episode, like as he was running, it sounded like a little like horse gallop. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like there's like this. The only way I can describe the sound of it of him flourishing is like a sparkle sound. Like if sparkles were a sound, that's like the sound effect that happened. Wow. And every time that he does this, I just die laughing. It's just uh, what the inner Eminem is feeling like. They, that's just like what they're. That's just what he's supposed to. Like what he always feels. Uh, you know, maybe it's because I'm uncultured swine, but I always find the dancing part to be kind of uh, like kind of cringe because I'm. It's, yeah. it's just like for me, it's just so random, right? Like I can't yeah. tell if what he's doing is like something that's magnificent or like like uh, like done taste. Like I don't know. I don't know what the word is for it, but I don't know if it's good or not, right? And yeah. like like Taylor said, with the way that they uh, played out the music when he was dancing and the way that they like they animated his dance. I don't know what he's doing, but if I was there, I would be like, man, what is this? Like, I would be kind of creeped out, right? Like, why is this guy just dancing in the rain in the park? Yeah. With his yeah. On, you know? Without context, that would be super creepy. <laughs> You're right. absolutely right. But people uh, love that shit. But it's in Japan, Japan so it's a normal thing. They just, they just basically, it's like, don't, just don't look at him. <laughs> just, just, keep, just keep going. I guess. And you know, it's all his fault too, right? Like, because the mother wanted to go out and enjoy herself, so she snuck out to see this guy dance, and that was when the kid was playing by himself and fell to the back me. Which, by the way, like, is amazing if you think about it, right? She, yeah, the like, physics of that was something else. <laughs> right. Like, I don't care, like, how young or, like, how old you are. If you fell from three stories and you landed on some bushes, like, I'm sure, like, the branches or whatever would just, like, like stab you as you fell down. So I, I don't know how that kid survived. I mean, it was only off of, like, a second floor. I mean, those are in some intense branches, <laughs> if that's what it is. Yeah, it was just a bush. It wasn't, like... <laughs> yeah, bush like, branches, it, it, right? Like sh- it's like a shrub. What, do you think it's going to impale him from the second floor? <laughs> Maybe. He's a three-year-old. I'm sure his skin was very, like, fleshy and soft, I, you know? I feel like there's a higher chance that he probably just fell head first and just, you know, just, like, and then all of a sudden just... <laughs> oh, I don't know, dude. This kid looks perfectly normal when they showcase the next time he was uh like on on the episode. Like he looked completely fine to me. Like this guy took more of a beating from his like his mom's. Wait, abuse. he's still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. we were talking about uh somebody has <laughs> that is deceased. Oh no no this. <laughs> Just like kidding. This, oh, I don't like. I don't know. There, there's so many things wrong with the intro. Like I can't believe they opened up with that. Like I was laughing I know, so hard. Right? <laughs> me too. Like, like, some kid was playing with his airplane, and, like, I knew he was going to fall off, right? And then, like, yeah. they just showcased him just, like, 
falling off, hitting the bush, and then cut the intro. And it's like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I went back and, re and rewound it because I was like, wait, did I miss something? Right. You <laughs> Is know? This the right show. Uh, dark, dark thoughts, guys. Dark thoughts. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, going, back, yeah. going back to him dancing, though, like when you're talking about you're not sure like what he's doing or if it's good or not. I think my comment to that would be that I don't think that the show has the budget for any sort of movement, whether it be fighting or dancing. So I find it really weird that they just gave him this random background skill of being a ballet dancer. <laughs> There's so many random things in the show, but. It's OK. That's yeah. all I've got for this week, though. I mean, I don't really have anything else to add. Yeah, no, it was an enjoyable show. And then, they, like I said, all their, their cases, like, it, it tugs at you emotionally, too. Like, mm -hmm. And it's always something different each time. Other than the, the two-part game war that we had uh, for the past two weeks. But, yeah, no, it's always it's always enjoyable to watch these shows. You never know what you're going to get. And it's always, like, I think it's done fairly well. So, so yeah. was the gang wars, like, a dance-off? No, but that uh, would have been great. I just, guess. Just, I was just checking. Yeah, they were break dancing, and then the best break dancer won the streets of Ikeburo. Uh So yeah, would that have sounded better than what happened? You know, it would have been more entertaining, <laughs> okay. right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Other than that fight in the adult section of a movie store. Uh, I mean, I guess, Wait, I guess it was purposely shot in a in the in a like the mature section of the video store. Uh -huh. So like we wouldn't be like so focused on how bad the the fight scene was, but <laughs> yeah, I I guess no no complaints on my end though. So me neither. <laughs> oh, all right, uh, but yeah, no, I think that's it. Uh, okay, still waiting for something epic, but I guess that's not happening. Yeah, whoever yeah. wrote the synopsis for this anime, they need to get fired because they just <laughs> oh, misled me so much. Dude, the synopsis of the show is like <laughs> gang wars. Yeah, no, no, no. Makoto is just some regular guy in this town, and then like he loses something dear to him, and that's what sparked this whole war or whatever. Like, I'm still waiting for something to happen to Makoto, like to his mom or that Chinese girl that they adopted, which, by the way, hasn't shown up since she was adopted. So I'm not sure where the hell she I is. I know. I'm so sad about that. I was like, yes, a Chinese character in this, and she just, I don't know, disappeared off the face of the planet. I she guess. Dipped. Right. You know. So she had better places to be. I guess, but yeah, the whoever wrote the synopsis needs to get fired because I was lied to. Okay, it's probably like related to the person who writes synopses for Netflix shows. I would blame somebody on anime list. They must have missed something. Obviously, they're not watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that, that's all I got. All right then, that will be the end of Ikebukuro. Uh While we still wait for Brian, we can move on to Moriarty. Okay, just kidding. But <laughs> thanks for joining us, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad and to be here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so since we have Brian, we will move on to uh, we will actually move on to Ju um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Brian, would you like yes. to start this I, off with us? I can't get enough of this show, man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get enough of this show. I love this show so much. Yes. It's got the comedy. It's got the action. It's got the main character just standing. That you got. You got a freaking sexy ass side character, dude. Oh my god, dude. It's great. I love it. Sexy side character. Which Gojo. That? Yeah, which one? Right, Gojo, dude. Come on, dude. His eyes, man. We just, we had a, I opened up with the previous episode with or no, two where was it? Two episodes ago. Two episodes ago. Two episodes Wait, ago. Did, you, did you just call Gojo a side character? That I is mean, yeah, that is the one offense you said, Brian. My bad. Yes. Listen, <laughs> MC the freaking he wins all the time, okay? Dude, even like, I wish I had his kind of attitude in real life. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Dude, I also like the new character they uh, they introduced as well. Basically, the guy he says like, "Well, I had two options. They were both trash, so I took the one that was the least trash." <laughs> so, yeah. I was like you just got all these like they're both shit, but if they're both equally shit, I'll just go with the one that I'm more in tune with. I was like, I respect, dude. I respect. Fair that. enough. Fair enough. No, it was like. <laughs> I love it. It's like jujitsu sorcerers are shit. Work is <laughs> shit. I'm just going with jujitsu sorcerer instead. What a guy. Dude, that's that's fair enough. I uh, let's see. Oh, what happened? So, oh, God, I'm trying to remember like what happened. 
Uh, it was pretty much the kid in the theater that pretty much witnessed those three high school students that were pretty much beating his ass. Oh yeah, I got their like their heads then, basically yeah, squished. Got, like literally demor like fucking their whole body was just morphed and they died. Yeah. So they, they may also made it sound like this guy can kind of in a sense like uh I don't want to say like reanimate them, but basically make them like zombies maybe in a sense and yeah. just turn yeah, them into curses. I'd, uh I'd, I'd, I'd go with that. No, he just kind of Frankenstein's them in a sense, right? Like Wouldn't that be a zombie just, though? I mean that's pretty close no, to zombie, not, right? Not zombies. They get they just get morphed. Like they get their insides turned out, uh and apparently they die from the shock. So Yeah. So the zombies kind of take zombies, it over then. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. So Frankenstein zombies, I guess you can call it that way. I'll go with that. Yeah. So now that, that kind of adds like an extra element to where they're not just fighting curses, but they're also fighting uh, people who previously were human. Yep. Oh, and then like I thought it was pretty nice too because when they started out the episode with that, I was like, oh wait, Stern's getting his answers. Why were the kids there? What's the kid gonna do? You know, like what's his like, what's his part in the show? So. Yeah. What do what what I, I have? Is, oh, go ahead. I, I have one like nitpick about this one episode. What high school kid goes to the theater at ten in the morning when you're skipping class? At the same like in the same movie theater too as the three people who are bullying you. Oh, like, yeah. bro, like who just goes to a movie like, theater? I, was this man just yeah, stalking uh, the three kids? Go home. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering too. Because like the the thing with him going to a movie didn't surprise me. That's probably something I would I would do to be honest. But okay. like, yeah, like what are the chances that those three kids are going to be there unless he was stalking them? That was weird. I completely agree. Uh, I mean, I can sort of understand like because I'm isn't like the schools like split up into districts and stuff and like. If you're within like the close enough same district, you get sent to the same school. So like maybe the movie theater is the only one near their school. Well, uh, I mean, I... I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, but it's like it just this... seems to me like they didn't even have to have them be those exact same kids. They could have just had it be three different kids. It didn't have to be the same one, so it was an odd choice. Uh, think... No, actually, with the way they set up the episode, it would have uh, to be those kids. Kid, yeah, it, it would. Ha- it would have to be them. I'm kind of surprised that the the girl that. Uh, Set him up. Wasn't part of it, or like hasn't died yet. But I'm sure she might be next, maybe. Dude, I'm not gonna lie though. That kid, whatever I forgot his name, the kid that got bullied. Uh huh. Jim. That kid, yeah. That kid just told that chick straight up. Like, I know. <laughs> down. I that was, was like, so what a bo- cool. Oh my standing god. Standing applause for that kid. He just didn't <laughs> care anymore. He's like, you know, I'm gonna just tell this chick what's happening. Like, <laughs> I was like, Jesus, what a guy. MVP right there. <laughs> Dude, we have to see also the uh, MC. Uh, he can use cursed, po- cursed energy, and apparently it's. This I kind of relate it to Ichigo, where he just has just brute strength, but he can't control it. Really? How about Ichigo? his like little niche thing with this thing? That was like a double strike. Dude, that's thing. that was. I thought yeah. that was pretty sick, actually. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty good. I like that. I don't know why I, I took fairly, it as. Go ahead. Is it fairly unique though? I don't think I've ever seen any other like. Uh, MC from Shonen that has that similar power. No, it's not the similar power, but it's more like just like how you know. Remember when Ichigo became uh, uh, a death god or a death reaper or a soul reaper, uh-huh. uh, yeah. where he basically had just brutal strength, but he just couldn't control like the power. That's why his sword was just huge because he mm-hmm. couldn't control it to make it like you know small. It was just kind of reminds me where it's just kind of just crazy uncontrollable power because it sounds like because it sounds like his like brute like energy is like stronger than a lot of jujutsu uh, sorcerers. Right, kind of yeah, superhuman man. in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but like, the double hit just looked awesome. For some, I don't know why I thought of like a shotgun. I have no clue why. Like I took it as where basically like, it just like the impact and then just like the explosion afterwards. I, I don't know. I don't think that's how shotguns work. But... It's not. That's the that's my point. Like I don't know why I kept thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking of like a double barrel shotgun. Or something. Well, I think it's because I think it's because <laughs> I think of that works either. I think it's because of Yu Yu Hakusho. You know where basically he does like a shotgun. And he has like the like the he does like the fist and then basically and then he just right. does like the shotgun. I took it as uh, I don't know if I took the motion as that, but that's what is like just sticking in my head. Maybe. So that is how I'm gonna defend myself in that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean shotgun it is. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> um but I yeah, no, I I thought it was pretty pretty cool. And then if anything, it's if you're like a fan of like Taijutsu or just like melee or hand to hand combat. Yeah, this is probably your your MC, right? Cuz yeah. That's going oh, yeah. his, his main main niche. So. Yeah. 100%. Oh, we also didn't yeah. talk about like the new characters too. Like his his ability is pretty awesome too. Um 
Is it kind of like he's able to tell where to hit for a critical strike? Is that it, what it, it is? basically like, sounds like critical strike? It has strikes, to be a yeah. certain ratio. It's like three to seven ratio, and then it's yeah. like it's one spot to have a critical strike. It's like so it, what? <laughs> well, it, it basically sounds like he can see those like where those spots are though. Yeah. 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 That's basically like what it sounds like. Um, so which I actually thought was pretty like pretty cool, but also very specific. And I don't know why. I don't know why. This is another person where I get also another uh, character shown in. Uh, or a shonen character is the the guy that uh, the guy that died in Hero Academia, the the guy with like the little chess pieces. I, for some reason, I get the same vibes from him too. Oh, yeah. No, I feel like he's he's definitely going to die next, right? Jesus. Well, but see that that's the thing. I I keep feeling like these side characters that are like teachers that aren't like uh-huh. the main ones. I feel like well, they're gonna die at some point. It almost it almost feels like it's guaranteed. Well, he's already setting up his own death flag. I hope not either. Like if you Dude, think about it, but no, no, like okay. He had a, he had a chance to bring Itadori with him because he knows where the where the guy is, right? So instead of bringing him with him, he's gonna say he's gonna take the safer route. He's still a child. I don't think he needs to like go through with this. It might be like like we might be out of like our uh, like our league in a sense. And based on the preview, he's gonna find him one v one. And if this guy is like the main villain of the story, for sure he's gonna die, right? Wait, oh, so I didn't even see the. I don't know if I saw the preview. The, you didn't. Okay. Oh, I, I like completely skip the preview, but yeah. Oh, yeah, past the preview, that shit's hilarious. All of those little mini things. Dude, I missed that. Though. Okay, I have to go back and at least see like dude, the, the, the fun. It's hilarious, dude. Oh, yeah, I love oh, all yeah. the. I've, I've seen all the other ones. They've all been I mean, just like, solid. I don't know if it was last summer or two episodes ago, where like the the volcano of Mount Fuji guy was Danny uses a soccer ball. I was like, yo. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was that was that was pretty good. Uh. But I would almost, I would normally agree or agree with you, Kuo, like we're in the sense of where their death flags are set when they basically explain what their ability does. But I, but I think it's it's going to be kind of, it's not going to be the same as this time because he basically, because even like the MC points out the fact like, dude, don't you like, don't basically like, don't you get like a, uh, isn't it like a disadvantage if you basically tell the person like what it is? And he basically mm-hmm. tried to tell him, it's like, you know, normally it would, but then it gets in their head. Like, are you telling the truth? Or they, 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 yeah, he's basically trying to do mind games with them with the with his death flag, <laughs> with his death flag you know, ability. I can, I can respect that, you know. It's like he's monologuing in an anime, and half the time you don't need to. <laughs> yeah. This guy's like using it to his advantage. Like, you know what? Yeah. Maybe I'm just telling him to fake him out, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I so I thought that was actually uh, pretty awesome too. Uh, I so I, so hopefully that this at least like I'm hoping this guy doesn't just like you know die right away. I don't. I, I would say like he's not gonna die right away because I feel like this guy still has like so much more to like to teach the MC. Because normally like you feel like they'd have to like you know go through at least more stuff or get kind of like more out of them. Instead of they kind of just give like he gave him like a couple tips and then that's it. He's basically just trying to have him kind of like you know do these things on his own instead of just telling him straight up like where all these things are. Uh, I suppose, but the thing with me, uh, with this character is that they kind of showcase what he has to offer already. So there's really like you know mystery behind him or something that needs to be fleshed out about him still. Yeah. Uh, so I don't feel like there's a reason to kind of keep him alive at this point. He could just be a catalyst for uh, the MC to get stronger in a sense. But that's that's it. Like I don't see what like what merit would have to have him like stay alive at this point. Um. Yeah, I could see that too. But but at the same time, we don't know like what more like uh he would really like, really need to know, like he like really need to do for the MC because it sounds like he like he you know even like in his inner monologue he's saying that this guy definitely has potential. Right. But so, then I think Gojo is more than capable of like bringing that out of him, so they don't really need him at all. But they both seem kind of like different different personalities and they like, kind of like different almost almost different users. Where Gojo right. like doesn't need like a built like basically. Like, like uh, abilities or like or or I guess weapons, where it seems like this guy basically he kind of has like a similar he can, he he has kind of like a similar deal where he can't like really bring out the curse too much. It's basically he has just like that cursed imbued weapon and he can just he mm-hmm. just knows where the spots are to hit. Right. When Gojo basically is just like overwhelming like like just with his cursed energy. Right. So I, I, I would see it as two different styles. Yeah. But I have but I, I have no idea. So yeah, I can agree with that. Gojo yeah. was like just a prodigy of his own, and then this guy was his name Nanami Kento. He's like precision, you know. He's very methodical what he does. Yeah, those characters are just like that. Just like that guy in uh, in Hero Academia. What was his name? 
Nightshade? Game. Nighthawk? Nightshade? Night something? Yeah. Nighteye. Something like that. Night eye. Yeah. Hawkeye? Something. Hi. That's, um, <laughs> I swear I was like Nighteye. But anyway. He did. Like, dude, yeah, same. Yeah, basically, it's just like immediately same kind of vibes, and it's just thinking, oh man. Uh, I hope you're wrong, cool. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> You want me to what? want me to hold your hand it's, and it's, tell you that time it's, it's, it's more like it just it sounds like it makes more and more sense. I'm thinking, oh man, oh god. So we'll, Dude, we'll see. We watch we watch more than enough shonens to kind of know who's gonna die. I know. I mean, I know. Immediately you just get those vibes from this guy. It's like, well, especially when they're yeah. he's hey, telling man, him like the. Did ability. you expect the MC to die that early? Did he die though? I mean, he technically was dead. Yeah. He got you know, a literal heart ripped out of his chest. Actually, well, that, I feel like that happens pretty frequently where you think they're dead, but then they come back. Yeah, that's like a shonen thing. Think about yeah. Goku, right? Goku died in like the first episode. Okay. Okay. Or Aaron Yeager. <laughs> right? And then he got revived and came back. He's died multiple times and he's the <laughs> MC. All right? Don't give me that bullshit. All right? <laughs> That's, so. that's like the most extreme of the cases of the MC coming back to fucking life. It's like, I'll just wish him back to life. The only exception was Super, where he like legit resuscitated himself with a key blast. That's right. ridiculous. That's literally the only exception. Bro, tons of shonen animes have their MC die and come back. It's like the ultimate cop out. I guess, yeah. Not wrong. It's like I, way later, you know? I don't really see it as a cop out anymore, uh, though. I just see it as like a normal thing for shonen. Right, right, right. It's just it's but, it's like almost like in the fine print where it's like to be considered a shonen, you must follow these steps. Have the yeah. MC die. Yes. At least once. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Uh we also got to see uh casual Gojo. His uh his yeah. uh outfit. Mm-hmm. That was nice. Dude, that guy <laughs> oh my god. He has <laughs> such good swagger, dude. He is so amazing. Oh my I god, like, I can't get enough this of man him. All dude, day. The, like the the animation they use for this man, that like, they they want you to know <laughs> this guy's like top notch yeah. <laughs> in everything. Bro, if, if the end credits didn't tell you that this man's got swag, mm, I don't know what else <laughs> to tell you, man. Fuck. All I can tell you guys is that I already bought his figure. So. <laughs> oh my god, you actually bought it? Wait, how I much? Bought it. How much? Fifty eight bucks. Whoa. Oh wow. Okay. It was a Figma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? I, it's I the ones, the one, it's ones it's with the, the joints. You can set them joint. up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But oh, it really. looks like him. Like it, it. Like it's still a good figure and it looks good. Like the yeah. correct proportions and stuff. I don't know if it ain't more than three hundred dollars. I don't know. Did <laughs> it a real figure? <laughs> That's right. I, none of my figures have been near that price. I will just exactly. let you know so that. All your figures are trash. Fake. Trash. I, I should. <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically, You're just not authentic. I'll take the middle case and just shove it down to the ground, and then, and then I uh, just leave it there for a few days, and then uh, slowly pick it back up. Wait. So, so Taylor and Shredder, what's the most expensive figure you have? I feel like you're setting up this question just to give me a hard time. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have something to add to this. It's okay. Uh, the most so, I. The there most, you go. the most I have spent on one figure with, uh, you know, with, with uh, you know, like, uh, with like the with uh, what was it called, like coupons and like sales and stuff. I would say, I think it was seventy, eighty dollars. I think was, was my your most, most expensive. expensive one. Was it only eighty. Yep, my uh, my mash from Fake Grand Listen, Order. That was like about eighty bucks. This guy bucks. literally says. He goes for the most discounted price ever. He's like a he's like a really discounted like mom going grocery shopping and couponing. <laughs> like I have hardcore a, but with figures. I have Anything a few connections I follow. Care. Yep. I have a few connections that I follow where I try to I try to keep the prices as low as possible just because I know I'm <laughs> gonna have too many. Okay, eighty dollars oh, versus Taylor. Uh my Yato figure was pretty expensive. If you ever wanna know or get an idea, you can always just Google it. Yato? Yeah. Yeah. From from Noragami. Let's just say it was over eighty dollars, but less than three hundred. Excuse me. Oh goodness. Oh, less than three hundred. Okay, this one I was looking. At, I was going for like average of like nine hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's why I bought it when I did because it was cheaper than I'd been seeing it, but it was still pretty expensive. She got it when it's expensive, but the price has been going up. A lot since then. Is he like? Is he the one floating in the air with like a beard yep. or something? That'd be the one. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. my god! Yo, it's on eBay. Resell that shit on eBay. It's like <laughs> seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. 
<laughs> but cool. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't sell him because he was my original number one oh. Hisbondo. He's my favorite, but I gotta tell you, there's you competition can, coming up. You can sell him for a better version of Gojo. There is no better ah. version of Gojo. So there's nothing yet. Yeah. Really? There's only a Figma so far. Yeah. But cool. What what is the what is the the piece that you would like to add to this? No. Well, the thing was is uh, I was looking through my email and then for some reason I got a uh, ad from Crunchyroll saying they're having a Black Friday sale on their figures, and there was a Hinata one that was like three hundred and twenty bucks that I was going to buy. Oh. But then it's but it's pre order only, and uh, I don't know if I want to do a pre order. So Crunchyroll Crunchy is legit though. It's like three hundred and twenty some dollars, I think. Man, I gotta look that up. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Yes. With the show, anything <laughs> else? I, I got. I don't believe anything else. Uh, what are they? So basically, the next episode seems like it's going to be uh, kind of like a kind of a fight. Definitely a fight. No, it's going to be a fight between the uh, the main villain and uh, the new guy. So oh yeah, the if, Nanami Kento. If that happens, Kento. He's, yeah. If, if that happens, yeah, he, he's probably dead. Unless oh, Kojo, unless Kojo of, comes in and saves him. Speaking of Nanami Kento. There's one scene where freaking uh, Itadori goes back up and says, hey, be safe or, like, you know, be careful or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's like, I'm not a teacher. Don't call me sensei. And then he just calls him Anatomy. He's like, I will slap you. I died <laughs> so hard. And I was like, yo, that's the most hilarious shit I've ever seen. Yeah. I yo, still... if, that's not, if that's not set up with that flag, I don't know what is, bro. Come on. Now. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, safe. that's true. That's true. The more you point it out, the more it seems like it's going to happen. But I'm gonna still hold faith that something happens where you know, Gojo comes in or he gets away somehow. Cause too soon, man. It's like what episode? Uh, he's not important. He's not Gojo. Jesus, <laughs> that is true. But okay, I got nothing else. Anybody else? Uh, no, that's all I got. All right. So that will be the end of Jujutsu Kaisen for this week, and then next we will go on to High Q. Brian, feel free to oh, open this up. Hi, 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 hi. Um. Is it a little bit better, you know? The ending a of it. A little actually, bit better. Yeah. It was, it was quite a bit better, but the bar was very low. <laughs> yeah, it was so yeah, a little bit better, you know. Um, no, no, this was like, I feel like this is what we've been waiting for this whole season. Like we were waiting for Hinata. <laughs> was that right? Last week? I don't think I was here last week. Uh, no, I don't no, you so. weren't. Last week's was terrible, anyway. I, I don't Wait, really. That's true. It was just it was legit a flashback of like. Aaron and Aaron and yeah, twins. it was a terrible, twins. it was a terrible Nishinoya flashback that really could have been done way, way better. And then the rest of the episode was the twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this episode, oh, the ending, I actually loved the ending, man. It was a very good ending because usually you're, I was so used to like you know them coming back, you know, spur of the moment. They're setting up all this crazy ass shit. Hinata, big ass MVP moment, <laughs> catches the spike with a freaking. 10,000 IQ fucking block <laughs> looking at the ball. I was like, holy shit, this guy's going mock speed in his mind. <laughs> so going back and forth. They spike the ball. They do the synchronized attack. I'm like, yes, let's go. Score that point. Get the freaking break point. And then they set it back, hits the net, and it goes on their side. I was like, dude, I, I did know. not expect that coming at all. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, bravo, dude. Thank you. I was actually, it was actually really good. That was like, a, br- was that was like a brutal blow. That yeah. point. But for the show itself, oh, it was so fucking good that they did that. Yeah, they actually did really good, like on the, just like the impact of the point, where everybody's like in it, and then you lose the point by by hitting by hitting the like uh by by hitting the net, and it just falls right over the, the net. I'm thinking you got like that. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That's like that's like that's the like, worst way to lose a point, mm-hmm. just for from sure. just dumb stupid luck. Yeah. So like. Everything that they did this episode, I feel like it's the reason why we love Haikyuu, right? Like, everything mm-hmm. had a lot of tension to it. And, Emotion. Uh, right. And if it wasn't for Hinata, right? Like, a main boy. Dude, that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm sure that everyone's, like, spirits would have been broken. Oh, yeah. But uh, I kind of like the analogy they used, too. Like, one of the twins was using. Like, he he's playing volleyball as if he was, like, he was starving and he was eating something that he enjoys. Mm-hmm. And it's making him more hungrier to play more volleyball and win. And then that kind of like spreads out to his teammates as well. So not only are they like back stronger than ever, I think uh, like this is probably the cue that they're going to win now, right? Um, because Hinata is just popping off. He's able to bring everyone back from like just being down. And uh, from the looks of it, like it, it ain't a fluke no more. He's able to kind of contribute 
as a like really good well-rounded player so yeah um, i wouldn't yeah. say like you know this is going to be just they're going to win because of it they're going to definitely mount a comeback uh because they're still like about halfway through the set i think because what it was like 16 to 14 or something like that so there's still a bunch of points left to play yeah no there there's still quite a few left but this or is just the starting point you know yeah this is basically like, kind of entering the final arc of the of the set hey yeah. man as as the uh, is he a coach i don't know i think so the coach Ooh. says for everyone that climbs up a ladder you must start at the bottom yes okay okay <laughs> <laughs> oh i just felt like it was the time to say that, you know? well, well, all right it was too good of a quote to let it, it was yeah it, it was that it was definitely a good quote it's just pretty good yeah pretty good. Uh, it's uh no, like the big, like like the, uh, the was it the emotion of the point and everything where basically you could tell everybody was just like brutal, um, and then was it Kageyama like almost admitted to like the point, but he's like then they're back and forth. They're like no no no, it, it was okay, or uh, I think that was this episode or was it the previous episode? No, I think this it was this episode. one, right? Okay, yeah. yeah, he received it. It was like he was like he was hesitating. He was like, oh, this is the perfect receive. Like oh, I won't say that, right? Yeah, he just does nice receive, and then when they went to do the timeout on the side. Uh, he he didn't want to admit it, but uh, Hinata already heard him say it. Okay, so. yeah, like, yeah. That, like dude, again, like the the interaction with the the like, team is just so good. It, yeah. it's just uh, it's definitely like the like the high mark of the point. But then it's man, the... even the bench players are bomb, dude. Oh my <laughs> god, whatever his name is, because he's such a freaking bench warmer. Like he came out, he's like, I only got one shot, misses his fucking serve again and he didn't miss it he made it over but it wasn't a strong serve he right. made it over he's like damn my chance to be a hero is passed and then freaking oh my god who was it nishinoya mm-hmm. oh what are you doing again he made that cr- wait did he get a crazy ass receive oh, yeah it was it, the it, overhand the yeah. double overhand receive when he told him to freaking move his ass up. i was like yeah. dude what a champ man <laughs> What a bench player, dude. I still, that was last episode. Yeah, that was so. last week's, but I, I, did, I definitely feel like if it was, like, better oh, animation, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. Like, like the animation, it, like, it would have meant, it would have, like, like I would have felt it more if the animation wasn't, like, as it was. Just not good. Terrible. Because, you know, like, yeah. all, because you could just keep thinking of, like, all the other epic moments that were just, like, so well done. And this one just, I mean, there wasn't, I guess there wasn't really much to this epic point. It was just basically, he just had to walk forward and hit right. the ball up, I guess. But, no, but I feel like with this episode, they actually did a lot more like original animation, right? Yeah. Uh, with the synchronized attack, they actually showcase all five characters. Yeah, and it, it using, looked better. Like, different yeah. angles. Yeah, yeah, they're using different angles. And then like with that moment that they were hyping up that, I mean, it was just one receive, so I don't know why we're so excited, right? It's but Hinata, it's, it's, it's Hinata. Yeah, it's Hinata we're talking <laughs> about. And then like the way that they uh, like they they drum they drummed up the uh, like the, the like that moment, right? Like, he thought it was over, but they do that one effect where, like, everyone, like, he blinks, and he was able to receive the ball perfectly. That rollback that he did, I thought that was pretty cool, even yeah. though it's something that's kind of basic. Yeah. And then the way that they followed up after that with, like, that crazy uh, volley that they had, like, I thought everything was done extremely well. Like, I don't really remember the music, but the sound effects that they're using set the at- atmosphere up perfectly, I thought. Yeah. And then, music like, still isn't the that tension. Good. Yeah, the tension from when they lost that point, and then, uh, like, the the spirits that was brought back up due to Hinata's like uh, like personality. Yeah. Like I thought that was so well done. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. this yeah, was basically even the animation I thought was like really good. So it was much better than what we've been seeing at least uh, definitely for like the last few episodes. Like yeah. it kind of like it got closer to like like Rio's episode cuz Rio's right. episode I think was the best animated episode so far this season. I think by far this is the best one so far. This yeah. just surpassed it. I'd, it's I'd getting say. there. It's getting there for me. That's yeah. what I think. <laughs> I but guess. it's uh, but no, like the whole like even even Hinata went back to being basically using like his like what he was known for known for being a decoy, where he right. just runs up there basically just screams out Kageyama's name, which I was actually hoping Kageyama would have just hit it hit it to Hinata, because right. I really just wanted to see some just craziness from him, even though he just received it and it looked and it looked awesome, mm-hmm. but the, yeah, the whole thing is basically where that like, the entire team was just stuck basically by losing that point, and Hinata right. basically forgot like everything that happened at that point. And he just mm-hmm. he just felt like the shit. He's just like, damn, did you guys see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, this is what I'm yeah. this is what I'm talking about, right? Like this good. is the the thing that he needs to do to level up and actually make this team more of a national team, yeah. not just some like random lucky guys that just yep. got a lucky break. So oh, and they basically hyped it hyped up everybody like you said, and they're basically all like uh, that, that souped up level now, or yeah. at least like zoned in or uh, 
or tunneled in, and at least, and they, or they already forgot basically like what happened at that point. So that was awesome. Right. Dude, if they don't win, like from this moment <laughs> on, I would be so depressed, dude. Like they, they are like they have the like they have everything going for them. Like I don't see how they could possibly lose this set. Dude, like, they're bringing honestly. the emotions back too. They're ba- they're yeah. ba- bringing all the emotional stuff. So let's see what happens. Yeah, Brian, you still you still quitting the show if uh, <laughs> if Cross and they lose? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to quit too. Holy oh. shit. What do you mean? You're gonna have an absolute ball it like this, and they just. <laughs> Hit the bed. Uh, <laughs> all I gotta say is, you know, when we when this season's over, um, and that happens, we definitely have to have you both on this on the call for for the <laughs> season so, review. I'm gonna be fuming <laughs> that happens. Oh my god! I'm, I'm gonna be uh, taking a week off of uh, the podcast. <laughs> okay. Like I'm gonna cry, man. Fucking Hinata did his best, and he still couldn't win. Oh. Anime. Honestly, I, I, I'm like basically, I, I'm already kind of guaranteed. Like once, like this. Uh, this season is over for or not not this season, but basically like when their their uh, semester or year is over because you know that's when the three years are like the third years are done. Yep. Oh god, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be tough to watch. Yep. anybody anybody got anything else? Uh, no, I just do. I just can't wait for the next episode. Yeah, I I just hope that the animation at least continues this level. Like, it just stays at this level and just finishes it strong. I don't want to see. That trash we had to watch like the last three episodes <laughs> before this one. You know, if if it's if it's trash because of the final episodes, like they're making sure it's of like the the utmost. It's best gotta quality. be. It's gotta be good quality. Maybe right. It, it's gotta be because I was really surprised that they brought it back to this quality. Dude, they have a high bar though because like every season had like that epic ass point at the end of it where it was just like where it, it's one of those where you could just keep going back and watching because oh. it was just so well done and just like the the animation was just as like a top notch as it can be. And so it's just like it has a high bar to kind of like uh, to match. No, but then with the last few minutes of this episode, it sh- they showcase that they can do it, right? They can add something original to it. They can bring up the quality to make it hype, right? Yeah. So you won't be like distracted by it. Yeah, I I think they can easily like continue this streak that they're having uh, yeah. onto the next two or three episodes. Yeah, the animation of the ball has gotten better too. <laughs> Yeah, like you actually see the ball moving, right? And that, it's not just like teleporting, like it's not just kind of moving. Crowd, yeah, yeah. Right? Where it's like, even though it's like a CGI ball, it's actually rotating. It's not just kind of floating. <laughs> right, you know. So yeah, it's no, they, they, they can definitely do it. I just hope that for some reason they don't like revert back to this. But if they keep True. it at this, dude, I I think I'd be happy. Yeah. Honestly, dude, I hate to shit on the parade. Oh god! But, oh, go ahead, go ahead, sir. Like, Who's <laughs> already shaking his head? From, from what we've seen so far of animation quality, like building up to this one specific episode, we might see like a downfall up until like the last like two or three, or like yeah. another really hype episode because you know I don't think they got the budget. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, from like all the other shows, they usually always kind of save like that. Like I, I feel like they finished the last episode first. And then they're just like, okay, we got that out of the way. Let's spread the budget everywhere else, though. Oh god, that's just in my mind. If if I if I had to do any kind of animation stuff, I would just want to make sure like you nail it, kind of like that final episode or final one or two episodes, depending on what happens. And then then just spread the budget everywhere else, just to at least survive for the season. Oh, the thing that does bother me though is like this this episode kind of confirmed it, right? Since they didn't win with this episode, the rest of the season is just going to be like them finishing up the oh, yeah. match. Yep, it's going to be this one. Yeah, so that. To me, it's kind of depressing, but season five, right? Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Season five, so. but I don't... Oh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right. This time. Anybody else? No? Okay. All right. That will finish up high cube for this week. Uh, welcome, Sasha. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. Good to be here. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh. Okay. So since we have Sasha, then we will, um, we will then review Fire Force for this week. Sasha, would you like to start this? Sure, guys. Fire Force. Ruining Dr. Giovanni <laughs> one episode at a time. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Bro, you don't like bugs? I, I, oh, I love bugs, man. Who likes bugs? Get out of here. Besides those <laughs> weird science kids in eighth grade who are like, the only people I can relate to are worms. <laughs> They're like, bro. <laughs> The only science I liked was Bill Nye and uh, Miss Frizzle, but you know, both those <laughs> they've they've aged themselves. So why why are you making fun of characters like Shino, dude? That's fucked up. Dude, who's Sh- Sh- Shino from Naruto? Yep. Yeah. He's the bug guy. 
Yeah. Dude, let's, let's, let's be honest, man. Nobody cared about him. <laughs> oh, no, no, no one did. Teacher. Okay, dude. But no one, no, no one cared about him. Come on, no one gave a fuck about that no, guy. No, literally. Why did not? Why did that guy not die compared to Neji? Like Neji, I actually felt bad about because, like, dude, I get him. You know, he he was the harsh brother, but he had good abilities and he tried to calm his lifestyle down. And then Shido was just like, I got termites in my sleeves, guys. <laughs> like, dude, get out of here. Um, but back to Fire Force, anyways, guys. This season is just an absolute shit show. Now, I'm sorry, but. There's no redemption here. Two episodes left. Not even the greatest of animated fights could save this. This whole like, oh, I had an Adala link with you. Ah, oh, ah, oh, now I'm going to turn into a thousand bees and escape. I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Can can we just stop with this KKK crew? Like, it's terrible. Uh, I don't like um, Pyro Girl. What was she? Number five? Pillar five? The I don't know. Pyromancer? Yeah, I, I don't. Just I don't think hurt. she's a pillar. She, she she wasn't part of this episode. You mean a necromancer? Necromancer, sorry. Yeah, yeah the one who's raising all the dead. Blew them all. Oh up, yeah. yeah, no, she was the fifth pillar's uh, bodyguard. Yeah. Like. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I got them mixed up then. So I I, I will retract my comments. I, I thought it was the same character. I'm like, where was the development for this character? How did she get to this point? <laughs> Dude, um, it, it was again the, the the thing that I've hated so much about this fucking season. A- again, like nothing happened. Like nothing really big happened besides uh, Juggernaut lost like what like an arm and a leg, uh-huh. and th- again everybody just ran off just like Team Rocket. Like we're just again nothing. They they ba- they basically beat down evangelists that again we just kind of found out this episode where they were basically just introduced for to feel like something something happened I guess. Yeah, it's really well said because if you think about it, the whole point of them being down there was to just kill half of the squad of number two because they're like yeah we're gonna join you this is gonna be really good (laughs) like i love how everything fit perfectly for it to come to this point it's just way too convenient um right you have this many people down there you have the kkk with these certain members that can create the situation victor figures it out after almost being killed and running for his life and then being like oh wait guys I know what it is. It's this jet-shaped explosion that's going to blow up the entire city <laughs> center. Yeah. And everyone's like, ah, oh, yes, yes, of course. Ah, oh, man. I just, uh, high point was Joker episode. And ever since then, it's it's been a giant struggle, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to drop this show after this season. <laughs> like, I, Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's more of like, like if, the, if the show like continues going after this, like, you know, they announce another season, I'll watch it. I really don't care to read it at all. Uh, that's really the only way I'm gonna actually continue with this show. Or if if they never like announce another anime season, like I'm not gonna like lose sleep over it or anything. I'll, I'll probably like you know look up like the ending just to see like what happened. But that's it. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm still gonna watch it just because they're already invested. In oh it. yeah, like I'd still watch it if it shows, but I'm just not gonna read it if the anime yeah. never continues or if it's just done. Yeah, but even season one had more like highs than this, right? Yeah, this is like, a like lot of lows. Oh, yeah. Other yeah. than the Joker episode, that was the only high point for this season. Everything else has been kind of a letdown. Yep. Yeah. Oh god. Yes. yes. By like a long shot, because like it's, it's been it's been multiple arcs in a row now where yeah. everybody has just ran away. Like everybody just kind of like disperses, like or they have like a fight, they run away, they have another fight, then they run away, and it's just like just nonstop now. Like it's been like a major like well, at least half this season where that's happened. Oh, yeah. and I, I love the convenience of. By the way, Maki's brother is the only one who knows the entire layout. He memorized <laughs> things. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Maki mysteriously came back. Woo! Yeah, she's the only one who could control these flames and prevent this explosion from. And you're like, well, that part. Of, times that that part made sense though because uh because um they, they gave her like that little walkie-talkie in that eight or whatever, basically a transmitter. Uh, or dude, that, you didn't find that cheesy. Time was too good though. No, but remember though, she was like when she first got moved to the, her like the new job, she was spinning it. Like so no, they, no, no. Like I, I get that she's aware of the situation, but the fact that she was able to make it there just in the nick of time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, I that, that's, yeah. That's, that's just shown in timing. I know, I know, but <laughs> it ruins. Yeah, the tension, I, I, I man. Get what like you the mean, stakes. Yeah. Yep. There yeah. are no stakes. Like Dude, if if, yeah. if half their team died, that'd be great. Yeah, dude, the, the tension in this show is just non-existent. Like any kind, of, even any tension, t- like any tension moment they try to build up, I don't take it as that. Just because, like, what we've, we've talked about many times, where they they just they they execute it so poorly between like you know comedy, comedy and like seriousness, where it's just like all the serious moments. I just basically feel like oh, it's like okay, is this gonna be like a funny moment again? Like I just basically kind of 
Where I'm just never, yeah. I'm never ready to take it as like some sort of like emotional hit. Or anything Dude, like that. the only thing worth watching now at this point is Arthur's moments. Like when they're he went, all, because, yeah, they're all ridiculous. State, dude, that, I thought that was pretty funny actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, other it, than that, there's really not much like to look forward to with this show anymore. It's to be just having a just yeah, it's just <laughs> it basically trying to close out. Because dude, because there's like what two ep- there's like two or three episodes left of Jiu- of yeah. not Jiu- Jitsu, um, of a Fire Force. So yeah, the, yep. this basically was like the final arc of this mm-hmm. season, and it was it basically was it might as well have just been filler. That's it, that's it, what it felt like. It was a poorer version of the final arc from the first season, and that's terrible. Yeah, that is. That's actually true because yeah, they were in the they were in the same place in the the, the previous season, weren't they? Yep. Same oh thing. My God. Getting another divide everybody up. Yep. Come up at, at least last season. It took us to the epic fight with the revelation of Show's powers and Shinra leveling up. Yep. And Victor joining their team and finding these things out. It was. It all kind of came together to serve a purpose. Yeah. This just feels empty and devoid of any this, relevance whatsoever. This fight, you basically just see Giovanni has a thing for bugs. Yeah, dude, that was that was terrible character development. I'm like, oh gosh, what what is this nonsense? They need they need the fourth captain back. Just loving to feel fire. I'm telling you, man, one of these last episodes <laughs> just needs to be him getting burnt, oh, <laughs> just God. throwing her on flames. Oh yeah, dude. dude the it, worst is. Oh, go ahead, Koo. No, and then like uh, with what they did the show. Like you didn't see him this whole season, and then when they finally showcased him, they got him dressed up as like a doll. Like they did him so nasty. I can't believe they would do a show like that, dude. Dude, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I have nothing to look forward to. Giovanni's ruined. Show has become a little doll. A puppet. They introduce doll, a character yeah. with a with a black hand that's a pedophile. It's just like, <laughs> where is the show taking place? Like, what's going on? They ruin or they didn't ruin it, but they haven't not gone back to the storyline with Joker. Benny Maru and uh, Burns, and that was by far the most interesting part. It's like yeah, the man. last two episodes. Oh my gosh! It's the worst part for me is I've been watching Golden Kamui, which actually takes humor and action and serious moments and weaves them very, very well. So when I go from that, it's like <laughs> you see the <this> shit. <laughs> it's just watch like a generic version of it, and you're like, oh, it's painful. God, yeah, oh. it's. I don't know, like, even, like, the the episode where we first had, like, where I thought, like, I thought, like, the, the arc where they had the talking mole, I was like, all right, it can't get any worse than this. And they've actually managed to get worse than that. Where, because, like, even the talking mole, like, they progressed the story in a sense where they, uh, they kind of, like, kind of understood, like, with, like, the keys, like, what actually, like, makes those, uh, like, the Amaterasu, like, basically burn or go. This is yep. basically, like, like, they're, they just went down to, like, the, the, like, the nether realm to basically, like, to really do what? Because nothing really happened besides, like, they just kind of did, like, a pointless fight. And they just were basically, like, how you said, Sasha, were just, like, a bunch of these characters that seemed really cool in the second, in the second, uh, in the second party. And they just killed them off. <laughs> and then the, then they basically kind of just, like, moved on. They all kind of ran away. And then here we are again, where it just felt like nothing, it, it didn't move anything forward. Besides, we no, just kind of know, like, this, the, the, current, the current state of a few characters. No, basically, they did all that, right? To figure out that, uh... Benny Maru's, uh, like, vice captain, whatever, he, he also has had experience with Theodola. So he's either going to be the next pillar or he's tied to this as well somehow. Somehow, yeah. So now they're going to go over to him. And I guess you get to see Benny Maru again, so that's nice. But that was basically all they got from this stupid investigation. Day. Well, yeah, this whole thing was, what, like four episodes long? Something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yep. a, a bunch of wasted time for, like, something that was covered in less than two minutes. It's sad, but sad yeah, I mean, fire force. Yeah, that's okay. Man. We only have two more, two, two or three more episodes of this. Do you guys not remember? Uh, it's two. Just, I'm pretty sure it's twenty four. Yeah, twenty four. Okay, so so you, you guys said two. Was it was, it, was yeah, that twenty two? Yeah, okay. I remember it was twenty two. Okay, all right, man. Okay, well, Sasha, okay, we're almost done with the show, and then uh, what was it just like? Uh, was it basically like a week from now? Just about. And like then you're, I'm, uh, I'm done with life. With it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That, that's where my body is about to explode. <laughs> but I mean, I really don't have anything more for uh, Fire Force, and more of just kind of uh, just just letting the season finish. Yeah. I really don't even know what to look forward to now <laughs> for this show. I mean, bro, tell you watch Golden Kamui, man. D- that's 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 another show on my on my uh, like my plan to watch list. I actually like, really want to. Do you, do you know if this season kind of like just side kind of side conversation real quick? Is the third yep. season is it twenty four or twelve? 
12. 12, I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay, so the, it, this it's just about done then for this season? Yeah, I think there's... Or there are two or three episodes left. Gotcha. Um, if yep. you want, we could add like a little set, like little part, like right after this, then, or like you know, even now, if you want to talk, to basically just kind of give like a rundown of uh, Golden Kamui. Your call. Your okay, call. I, guys, no, spoiler I can... free. Spoiler free, though. Spoiler free. I got yeah. you. All right. So Golden Kamui, it is. Uh, I think it's gaining popularity all over Japan. The hence why season three's come back. Season three has upped. The production value, which has made the fights uh, very interesting. There's even a... I, I'm going to allude to it this way. There's a battle, a sniper battle, that reminds me of the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3. Right? When when you're playing as a... What's his name? I'm, I'm totally... For, it's not Solid Snake. Big Boss? It's, it's uh, Big Boss is the lady. So... Oh. I forgot his name. Yeah, yeah. No, wait. You might... You know you're right. You're right. It is Big Boss. Sorry. I got completely confused there. But yeah, big boss, and it's one of the most epic levels, and there's a couple episodes that remind me of that. The show, just what it does really well is it, it develops its characters, and then you see how they're all intertwined, and then sometimes you get these episodes where you get character backgrounds, and holy moly, one of the ones this season, complete mindfuck. You're like, was God. this character telling the truth? Were they not? I don't know, because they're that <laughs> devious. Um, the, the humor is excellent. If anybody who's listening has watched season two, all I'm going to say is Sea Otter Stew and Stanka. Those two episodes will forever be in my good graces. Uh, it's just a really good show in terms of balance. It gets the humor right. It gets you intrigued. Like You actually learn about the Ainu culture, which is fascinating because they're a minority in Japan, and they've struggled between the Japanese and the Russian cultures and being sandwiched in between two wars there. Sorry, not two wars, but two warring nations. So the show is just excellent, excellent, excellent. Season three continues it. Like I thought season one was good. Season two is season one on steroids, so it's great. Oh, and then season three has continued the greatness. Um, I, I will tell you this. One of the episodes caught me completely off guard. It was the hardest... I've laughed at, I don't know which anime, but probably since Golden Boy. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I, I you know, I don't want to set the tone or set the bar that high because then you might be like, oh, I didn't really find that that funny. But either way, Golden Kamui, uh, we just got into basically a Batosai like character, and they revealed Ooh. how he served the shogunate. Shinsen Gumi, does that ring any bells, oh. everybody? <laughs> Oh, yeah, they mentioned them, too, so I'm like, oh, man, Shishio, that's what's <laughs> up. Um, but the show has fist fighting, sword fighting, gun fighting, dog fighting, bear fighting. I oh mean, it's got everything you could ask for. And then, obviously, it talks about food a decent amount, which actually makes me curious about trying some food this way. <laughs> so uh, it's just it just does everything well. It's well animated. The voice actors are awesome. It's got probably my favorite Japanese voice actor, honestly. Even though I, I can't understand the language at all, <laughs> I just like his tone and the characters he plays. And it's the guy who played Shark Park from, uh, what was it? Oh, God of What's, High School. Thank you, God of High School. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's, yeah, play, yeah he's really good. Yeah, he also played uh, Hannes in Attack, of, Attack on Titan. And then he's also played Chisaki in my hero academia and in countless roles like he's in a lot oh, yeah, of he's really good. very recent yep so it just whew, it is a, definitely a top tier anime and it's you got so many characters to root for and to root against so this last episode uh just digs it even deeper like it shows you that it's kind of like attack on titan where you can look at the show from different perspectives and you're still really entertained as opposed to other shows uh, fire force where <laughs> as soon as they deviate from the main character you kind of lose interest in certain characters right yeah this show actually keeps you intrigued in everybody so um really really impressed by golden kamui uh and i'm surprised how under the radar it seems online in general but like i said i think it has a really strong standing almost like a cult following it's got it yeah that's at least yeah but Golden Kamui, two thumbs way, way up. Um, Ten out of definitely 10? a top. Uh, this I can't say yet. Okay. The season, no. I, I would say first season was an 8 out of 10 because I thought it was good. It was original, uh, but it lacked like these super peak moments that I always look for in anime. But then season two was probably a 9 out of 10. It's got, man, it's just got some craziness <laughs> in there. Let's just say by the time you watch season two, episode one, you know you're in for some weird ass shit, <laughs> but it's hilarious and it keeps you glued to the screen. So. 
Yeah, I'll have to let you know when I actually start watching that show, but it's it's definitely on my watch list. Yeah. It's going do, to be done. It's going to be done. It it's literally twelve episodes per season, so it's like I caught pretty quickly. Um, it's it's just the the humor and the action are worth it, and like I said, the story is really intriguing. Um, there's this whole thing about the tattoos and prisoners, but then you get to know more and more, and you're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so it's. Yeah, and the humor is it's outrageous and it's it's pretty sexual, but it's hilarious. I, I do I love everything comedy, so I'll take it. Yeah. Yep. Not Trust me, lie. you will you will laugh her. Yeah. Uh, uh you have piqued my interest in this. <laughs> oh, I got you, Brian. Trust me, you guys will, will love this. There's a character that reminds me like each one of us could be a certain character. Like oh, the way my boy got me to watch it, he basically <laughs> told me I'm who is considered the escape king. And then when I saw that guy, I was like, man, fuck you. <laughs> Um, so, oh, so shit. trust me, guys. Um, there are some characters that you like, and then you start to learn more about them, and you start to despise, and vice versa too. So it's one of those shows where it's just it's it's well done. I will warn you, the CGI with the bears <laughs> sometimes is pretty <laughs> shitty, but the show is so worth it that you're like, eh, it, it, it's all good. I'll I'll let you know when I start the show, and you'll have to let me know which character then you think like like me, Ku, Brian, whoever would be, just okay. to see if I if I get that same vibe. I got you. I got you, bro. Yeah. Um. Funny enough, a coworker of mine was actually telling me about it. So it, I, the sh- like, there's some parts that you were like explaining, and I was like, oh, I've heard of this part before, but yep. I'll probably watch it anyways and see, you know, how hmm. it ends up there. Dude, just wait. I'm telling you, the two key moments, one from season two and one from season three. I'm just gonna say this: sea otter stew. Remember that when I tell oh, you that, okay? Because you're gonna be like. What, what does that have to do with anything? And then from season three, it's the Stanka, which is like, I think it's episode two. So it's right away, something ridiculous happens. Uh, so you'll see. These you'll are see. both season it, two? Um, the Stanka is the beginning of season three. It's like oh, okay. episode two, gotcha. season oh. three, I think. Okay. Whereas season two, Sea Otter, Stu, it's, I think it's in the latter half of the season. Um, and then season one is good, but it's like all the development they've had from season one just makes season two so much better because they up the stakes. Like the story goes in really unpredictable directions where you know how typically in an anime, you pretty much you have your groups decided and it's like this group against that group and these guys. Yeah. Well, in this show, there's these groups, but they change their purpose all the time. And so people have different allegiances from one episode to the next. And you're like, oh, I never expected that pairing or oh, what's going on here? Uh, but it's it's done in a well thought out way. Gotcha. Well, shit. I'll definitely have. I'll, yep. I'll definitely let you know when I actually start watching the show. But it's going to be it's going to be done. Please do it's, because it, it, it sounds too good to pass up. It, yeah, it's one of those hidden gems. Where you're like, I'm not really expecting that much from it, and you're like, oh, that that surprised me. That's oh, what a lot of people say one. too. Yeah, they like a lot of like they they consider this show like kind of like a hidden gem or something off the side where, like, it's really good, but not a lot of people are watching it. Mm. Yep. And I feel like it actually fits even more right now because it is winter. And you just kind of get in the mood for it where you're like, dude, these guys have to go through a lot of struggles. Like there's episodes of people sleeping in animals or like showing you certain ways how to survive in the cold. Oh, and yeah. obviously then it gets into ridiculousness as well. But uh, okay. yeah, just just fascinating from all parts. You can learn something from it. You can laugh at it. And then you can be amazed by its uh, fight scenes and characters. Gotcha. But yeah, from, from previews, like when I actually watched it before... I did not peg it as a comedy. Like it from like the like uh, from the trailers and everything I watched, it made it seem like it was a serious show. So that's why I avoided it. <laughs> Maybe it's so serious that it's funny. Yes. Uh, uh, um, I, I just think it's 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 serious, but it, it it gives you the humor that we have. Like if we were to all hang out at a campfire and then something were to happen, it's that type of show where you're like, it reminds you of the times where you're with your boys and nobody else is around. And some crazy shit goes down, like, you know, whoever falls asleep, we're going to slap their face with a sock or whatever, put shaving cream on their asshole. Um, it, it's like that type of show, because trust me, it has a lot of ridiculousness. Well, uh, since I've never been around a campfire with you guys, um, I don't know how I would relate to that. Cool, there's always oh, first. You, I mean, I yep, haven't you, either, but... <laughs> Don't worry, bro. I can tell just from my interaction with Shrat and Sash, you're in for a <laughs> stupid Coo. shit. Oh my god, stupid. All I'm gonna tell you is, uh, don't drop the s'more. 
<laughs> now why in the hell would I drop a s'more, sir? Oh my oh, god. Come on, worry, I would have dropped that. <laughs> hey, things just happen, just man. Someone might finesse. Yes, somebody brings a lotion and then that, that thing just slips right out of your hand. <laughs> Who the fuck would bring lotion to a cabin trip? Dude, you don't know, worry you, about it. You should get slapped. Yeah, man. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, some people might like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. But yeah. Major, major thumbs up. Please watch it. Watch at least three, four episodes of the first season. And just know, it's season two where it really picks up. But at 12 episodes, you can't really go wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I might, Solid. I might All right. Any last closing statements for that? Uh, yeah, I got a cl- last closing statement. And you'll get this when you watch it. I am immortal Sugimoto! Ah! Thanks, Pip. Right, no problem. <laughs> I'll let you know when I get to that point. Okay. Don't worry, that's like every other episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I got you then. Alright, so we will then uh, close out that part. Uh, and then we can finish up with more already. I believe... Because I, I believe everybody has dropped Noblesse now. So that is now off of our list. Yeah. <laughs> so... Sorry. Sorry, Manual readers. <laughs> I tried so hard. I really... It... I, I, I watched, I think, three more episodes of that than you did, Koo. Three or four episodes. And it oh my just, goodness. Did it get better? No? It got slightly better. Like, I could see that there was inklings of what could make it a good show. But, like, reading the reviews online, I mean, they skipped the entire first, se- like, season of the Manwa. It was never done. Like, they just did oh, it. What? Straight up skipped it. <laughs> and so, like, people were saying, yeah, it sucks to say this, but, like... You know, nobody would like this. They ruined my manhwa. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like if it's done like that, there's no way in hell they're going to, like, reanimate another manhwa, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know how well God of High School did and how well uh, Tower of God did. But uh, if if I think it's a o out of, 0 out of 3 for, like, adaptions, like, doing well, I, I don't think, like, uh, Mamas are going to be a big hit. So, well, yeah. I mean, if Crunchyroll is behind it, no, uh, I don't believe Crunchyroll is uh, producing it very well at all. No, they're really not. Like, I thought yeah. Tower of God was pretty good, but like, I don't know. I don't like looking at it. I don't know what they could have done to get people interested in it more. It's just like the pacing mm-hmm. in Mamas is so different. The way they introduce things is different than manga or anime so well, i don't know i just i just feel like the only sh- uh, of the three manhwa i think the only one that actually has a shot would be tower of god uh yeah. and i think i think a big part of it was just because of like that's when covid happened and like every, everything else was canceled and then you had just tower of god that like, there was very little shows that were actually airing and i think just because of that people would just like have like their own like their their own like daily routines they go through like you know you come home you watch like an anime or something like that but then if there's nothing like that that I could see a lot of people just reaching out to like other shows that normally they would not watch, and this yeah. would actually have that shot. And of the three, I actually think Tower of God was the best, or like at least the, the like the the best that was, or the, the one. worst. Yeah, <laughs> but pretty much basically, where it was, it was like the best of the three, uh, yeah. which the other two were set. It was a very very low bar, but uh, just like about what of how Tower of God was done and just like what well, basically like the pacing even though i first thought it was like kind of slow but now i actually kind of appreciate it because they didn't really i don't feel like they missed as much but i could be wrong because i don't i don't read the manhwa yeah but, um from what i've heard like i can agree with you too i think tower of god has the most potential out of the three models yeah definitely like, you know, right the big stream ones like the only the only problem with is what i've heard for the adaption into anime form for tower of god is there's so much like thick story building behind the scenes that, that we don't get skip over and the anime watches don't get like it's absurd like, like yeah. I've, I've said it so many times like when the author himself has a separate blog post to mm-hmm. further like expand on the world of power of god god damn that's when it's really hard to like put into anime form like you could like i don't know do some like filler canon filler episode to like explain the backstory more but like, yeah I, right I, I don't know how you do that yeah, no, I, I mean, of the three, I think if 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 Crunchyroll needs to focus on one, I would say do I would say go for Tower of God. Yeah, I'd honestly just funnel all your money into that. Yeah, if yeah. If, if you feel like you have to do something of Manwa and animate it, Tower of God. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if anything, 
if if this is the last one that they do, right? I would hope that they would reboot Tower of God and set it up as a long running anime series rather than a seasonal one. That's and true I think too. Yeah. Be just fine. Yeah. I really hope that they do that because honestly, Tower of God really is great. Like, there's so much, there's so much there that's so good, and it'd be it'd be really great to see more seasons of it animated. And since there's now a little bit more of a following, they can spend a bit more time going into that world building. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, to be fair, though, for me, Tower of God is known as memorable because of the ending. Like, fucking Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. I need redemption. That's why <laughs> That's why I would want more. But other than that, like, Tower of God with the with the way that they set up the story and the pacing, I, I, I can really care less about it. So. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, that was our little kind of rant about uh, Manwas <laughs> and the reason why um, there's no more Noblesse this season. So this will be, like, the last episode of that. Noblesse. Yeah, no boys. no boys. I have no idea. I just say no bless. I don't watch that show. I don't. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll vampires come out. Model. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. all right. We'll finish this up with the Moriarty. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um. <laughs> uh, mo- some more ridiculous shenanigans. This is a th- two or three part arc that it's on right now. Um, Moriarty and company are trying to set a stage play on this cruise ship that they're on. Um, basically, to it, it's just this, this situation that they're manufacturing to show how evil nobles are. It's kind of hard to explain. But it ends up with some guy basically murdering a noble, murdering another dude, somebody that's poor, on stage. And it was absolutely ridiculous. The whole setup of it was so over the top and so unbelievable, but it was still enjoyable. Um, it was like ridiculous in a good way. And then we saw more of Sherlock at the end because Sherlock confronts Moriarty and says, um, you know, it's really interesting. Like it looked like that guy got murdered on stage, but actually I think there's more going on here. And he lists off all the reasons for why he thinks that this was a setup. And then the next episode, which we normally wouldn't cover this week, but since the podcast is on a Sunday today, it's already come out. Uh, I watched a little bit of it. I didn't watch the whole thing yet. So I'll talk about that next week. But it looks like it's um, a shift and it's starting to follow Sherlock now, at least for this episode. And Mm. yeah, this upcoming one. So yeah, um, that's that's basically what happened in it. Still consistent, still strong. I like it. It's my third favorite show of the season. Ooh one of the few i actually like i mean i'm not gonna lie you guys like i look forward to watching that more than i look forward to watching haikyuu jeez you know <laughs> with the way haikyuu is i don't blame you that is fair <laughs> yeah this would be yeah. the season of that um so yeah i mean i would say it's really enjoyable i'm just excited to see where they go with two seasons of it and it's following sherlock good man to follow <laughs> yeah it, it seems like a different personality for sherlock than what oh I've seen god before. how how do they make his personality i just picture uh robert downey as sherlock so bro you can't every sherlock is different okay you can't have yeah. like robert downey jr just in your mind every time you think oh sherlock. well that's me that's 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 the tip that's the top of uh of sherlock quality really Unfocused what about the other guy color batch no. nah i don't care i didn't yeah, watch him, him. what i like color batch but cause... Iron Man died. Get the hell out of here. Spoilers, by the way. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. More spoilers. All right. Fuck. We're going to get canceled, guys. <laughs> Even though our, it, our podcast is... not been like two years already, dude? No, it's not Has long it? enough. No, it's been... I, I, I want to say maybe a year. Year and a half, maybe? I, I'm losing track of time. Same. Uh, Yeah. Year or two, sure. Yeah. But I don't know. But our, our podcast is basically spoilers, so, you know. Oh. That's what it is. Not IRL, dude. Yeah. Come on now. We will soon have a, a, a like after hours podcast that I'll be posting where we're just going to talk about a bunch of nonsense and other things. So, have you announced our uh, our plan for Attack on Titan? Oh, I, I, well, I can talk later. It really depends on you guys. If uh, I thought like maybe like a uh, uh, shoot, Sasha's already muted himself. Um, that the episode, like the day that it, it airs, you know, like just to have like a podcast that night, and then uh, if you guys just wanted to kind of talk about it. A podcast that night? Yeah. What, Not do we a know long what? one. Just about Attack on Titan. I think it's, yeah, only only of, of Attack on Titan. So it'd be, kind, it would be a quick one. Come out? I think it's a Monday. It's a Monday. Yeah. A Monday? Monday. Next Monday. Oh, next Monday. Yep. No, but on Monday in general? Yeah. 
It, it would just be a one, just a one, -off, just a one-off thing, just to basically just get it out there. Uh... Oh man, my Monday night football. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, who's playing, Brian? <laughs> I... Get out of here. People. People. <laughs> People. Duh. Possibly a team with a, with red and possibly a team with blue. Maybe purple. I, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, wait, doesn't... Wait, so, uh, Brian, don't you work Mondays? I do. Oh, so that would work for him. Well, I mean, well, you... What time... But you still get off at, like, 8, right? Uh, it depends, because... Okay. My, we can get into this later yeah well yeah we'll, we'll, do, we'll do like a text and we'll talk off stream and we'll try to figure out and something and then we'll yeah. we'll try to like just kind of like let people know ahead of time if possible yeah oh on a side note about aot uh apparently there is a chronicle out for it that recaps season one through three so uh, have you guys seen it yet like <laughs> yeah like no, a movie but, that recaps no. it but if you're like me, you've already watched seasons one through three like five six seven times so it's really <laughs> not cool yeah. <laughs> like this this is the best you're gonna get from me, right? I'm willing to sit through two hours. It's it's two hours of recap, okay? That's if you're gonna you're watch gonna get it, just watch it. God, you're doing yourself such a disservice. Dude, I went through one and a half of the seasons already, so it's but fine. The first season is the best one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, don't I only got I, one week. I don't think I'd rewatch season two, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do not like that one as much. Look I love the, it. The, uh -huh. the animation studio thought of me when they made this Chronicle movie. Because they're like, man, Ku ain't going to rewatch season two. And he wants to watch season four. So let's just do a recap. And here we go. There's a there's a recap. So I'll I think pass. it's funny that they're doing that now for season four. But they didn't do one for like season two. Because wasn't there like a four or five year break yeah. between? Yeah, yeah there yeah. was. That, that's where they had the most following of fans. Was, it was so long. People were yep. like, yeah, yeah, we never get another Season of this that show. yeah, but basically that they read the manga, they basically moved on. Yeah. Oh no, I just realized we missed anime news at the beginning of the podcast. We did not. I actually said huh? anime news. We did it. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, like we missed a piece of news. Oh, what's that? Oh. What's another piece we missed? A new uh, trailer dropped for the Yuri on Ice movie. <laughs> what? I didn't see that. Yeah, it's out. I didn't even realize it was out. But like one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite artists. He actually did a, a live stream drawing like a couple uh, scenes from the new trailer, and I thought it was just fan art. I didn't even know that it was like from the trailer. Huh. Uh, but yeah, it's out there. It's happening. There's not a date, but it is happening, it's and happening. it looks great. And it's by by Mappa, so it should hopefully look a little like even better than it did before. If Mappa, you know, it'll just, it'll be fine. I'm surprised I didn't see it on Anime List or hmm. Anime News. You mean? Well, anime news, yeah. I, oh, no, I completely missed it, didn't see it, but... Yeah, but, okay, no, that'll, that'll be cool. All right, anybody else with uh, any kind of closing uh, closing statements for anything? Uh, nope, that's all I We're got. Good? We're good? GG? GG. Okay. Well, that'll wrap up this week of the podcast. Uh, we'll try to keep uh, information posted on if we're going to be doing... Um, like a special Attack on Titan stream. We'll see if we can get everybody together and see if everybody's like on if, if everybody kind of agrees to it, has the time. Uh, the normal podcast will be back on Friday. We decided to kind of change up some things for the holiday week where not mm -hmm. all of us were able to be here. David is currently uh, <laughs> struggling with the uh, classwork, so uh, he was not able to join us for today. But I am assuming he should be back on Friday, though, because, I mean, it's right, you know, it's right before the weekend, so I'm sure he'll be... He'll be back with the original host, so you don't have to deal with my uh, with my uh, garbage um, introduction and did hosting. You fuck it so. up again? No, I actually did okay. I think. Oh, See, you're fine. I didn't. I didn't. I, I did not screw it up nearly as bad as the first time I had. Uh, as the first <laughs> basically, I was that guy in high Q that walked in there. was like, all right, this is my big moment, and it just hits the net. <laughs> so that, that I'm I'm whatever number that guy was. But now <laughs> I've 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 slowly got better. I, I'm the other guy on the other team now, where he basically was in there for two points. And then he was out. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah, I was actually waiting for that, though. So it wasn't as funny as I thought it'd be. Oh, well, my bad. I'm yeah. sorry to have disappointed you. It's okay. There's always In next the time. sense of my success, my, like, by succeeding. Hmm. But anyway, uh, we will wrap it up here. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for the chat, for uh, talking with us. Thanks, Johan, uh, for joining us again. Thank you all for, uh, what, what, does he, what does he call us normally? The cast, the crew? 
Yeah, uh, the cast members. Uh, friends. Panel. Friends, panel, yeah. Friends, family, yeah. panel, all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> Long distance friends. Uh, pen pals. Anyway, all right, we'll close it off here. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.